today's video, I want to share with you seven good habits that if you follow these habits, they could turn into a lifestyle of discipline to help you get closer to the Lord, to help you build a relationship with the Lord. Now, how many of us may say that we believe in God? Um, we may visit church once in a while and pray every so often. But did you know that God wants to have a relationship with you? And that's part of salvation. When you accept Jesus Christ in your heart as your personal Lord and Savior, the Word of God says that those who can declare, those who can say with their mouth that Jesus is Lord will not perish but have everlasting life those will be saved, right? But it also says how God wants a relationship with us. Now that you've accepted Christ in your heart, are you willing to now commit yourself to having a life led by Jesus? Can you commit your life to the Lord to be a child of God? To not only say, I received my salvation this one day, but I want to be saved. I want to be pleasable before the Lord. I want to have a relationship. We don't want that the day that we meet with God for him to tell us, I don't know you. And many times we may see that phrase where he responds, I did not know you, right? And it's like, wait, what do you mean? But you're God Almighty, all-knowing, you created us, so how do you not know us? That verse or those verses are referring to because we don't have a relationship with God. See, we may pray when we need something from God, when we want blessings and open doors and opportunities in, life, in our life. We may read the Word of God. We may worship here and there and go to church and visit here and there, but we don't have a genuine, you know, authentic relationship with God. Now, I'm not judging anyone. I've been there too where I found myself like, I really want to get to know God. How can I get closer to the Lord? How can I be so, so close to the Lord that I could be sensitive to the to His voice, to the Holy Spirit? How can I learn to know when God may be speaking to me in my life, in my heart? And maybe to you this may sound bizarre, like, how do you just believe in an imaginary being? Well, good news is, God is not an imaginary being because while we can imagine how God may look like, right? He is not imaginary where it's a pretend world of faith. This is real faith and we have faith in a real God that loves you and because he loves you, he died on a cross to save you. Um, because he has grace and love for you, he saves you and he has mercy on your life to forgive you your sins and give you everlasting salvation, right? But at the same note, God wants to have a relationship with you so that not only he could work in your life, but so that you could get to know him. When you get to know God, you have a better understanding of his word, of, you know, your worship life changes. You know, the way you pray changes your perspective in life. It's not just about being positive. Yes, you're more positive. Yes, you're filled with more gratitude, peace, and strength. And you are able to overcome life's circumstances so much better. But at the same time, you are growing closer to your Heavenly Father. You are pleasing the Lord. The Lord knows you. He sees that you are trying to have a genuine, authentic relationship with you where you can say, I not only know, but now I know you, okay? And that's a Bible verse as well, and I'll put that right here. One thing is to know of God and to hear of God and to hear of other people talk about all the great things that he's done. But the other thing that's so special is to actually experience him in your life and say, wow, thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. You are so real. And to know that there is a true living God still. Although you can't see him in the physical, but you can definitely experience him in the spiritual, okay? Just because you can't see God doesn't mean that God does not exist. God is in heaven, but his spirit is also all around us, okay? He sent his Holy Spirit to guide, comfort, and protect, you know? And God sent his son Jesus to live on earth to give the best example of every possible situation in life that you can have in human form that we can you know relate and say okay god lived it and he experienced it and he gave us the be best example but also with the purpose as the messiah that he would die on the cross and resurrect on the third day and he did that for love for you and it's such a beautiful thing so on that note it's like okay who is this god who is this jesus guy that i'm hearing of well the way that you can get to know him 
by a true authentic relationship with him is by working on getting close to him and how do you do that i have seven good habits that if you follow these seven good habits you will definitely grow closer in a relationship with the lord and the first good habit to form is living a life of prayer we see prayer a lot in the word of god in the book of jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3 and i have other verses to share with you about prayer because i know i recently shared this bible verse in a previous video but i do have to bring it back it's necessary because the lord tells you in this bible verse call on to me and i will respond and you know and then i'm gonna pause it right there where he says call on to me how do you call on to jesus how do you call on God? Through prayer. So that's why it's so important. I just want to let you know that you're not praying to just anyone. You're praying to God that wants to hear from you. He's a good God. He has good intentions for you. It's everything with the best envision for you he because he loves you. So he says, hey, call on to me and I will respond. And, and then he gives you certainty and I will show you great and unknown things that you do not know. He's saying, call on me, I got you, I will respond, and then I'll come through for you. So that's what that verse is saying. And then in regards to prayer as well, and as you guys may know, if it's not your first time in my channel, like I say, if I'm looking down, it's because I'm looking at my notes. <laughs> Here, I, I like to prepare beforehand. In the book of Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer okay and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known to god so you know that before you go to any person saying i'm so stressed about this i'm so anxious about this etc etc god says hey don't be anxious for anything but pray about everything so something i like to do when i begin to feel anxious uh the night before something or the morning of something or during the day yes i'm human i'm not perfect shoot i'm applying this to my life as well <laughs> but i could i've learned throughout these years that i could be like take a step back lord i am being i'm feeling anxious for this and that help me get through this and suddenly the, the day is so much better and i feel calm and a comfort and i could take a deep breath and just go about life better and it's like god you just help me navigate through this issue that i was anxious about and then it turned out to not even be a big deal so god he's definitely listens listening okay he wants your your commitment he wants to come for you and he wants a relationship with you but how are we gonna have a relationship with someone or say that we have a relationship with someone that we don't talk to so praying is simply talking to god you see what i'm saying he wants you to talk to him imagine someone that's really close in your life let's say someone that you may speak to every day or have some type of good relationship where you talk most of the time but then you're not talking to this person for a long time and you're like okay we're good i know we may not talk for a long time nothing changes but is there a relationship there that's the question you see what i'm saying so it's like all right how about if i'm with somebody right i want to say my husband but let's say we weren't married and we didn't talk let's say i was dating someone and we just never talk is there a relationship there do i just know of you and you know of me and we're mutual and we may just have chemistry and we could just chat here and there but how are you getting to thoroughly know each other if you don't even talk to each other how can you work through conflict if you don't communicate you see what i'm saying you you catch my drift so prayer is simply talking to god and no there is no perfect prayer but he definitely wants you to go to him okay in the book of romans chapter 8 verse 26 it says likewise the spirit helps us in our weakness for we do not know what to pray for as we ought but the spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings to keep too deep for words so god is so good he intercedes the holy spirit intercedes and matthew chapter 6 verse 6 and i'll be very quick with this but when you pray go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you and this bible verse is referring to father our heavenly father our lord and savior and um it's god the father right so he's like go in secret and i love this bible verse i like to remember it because he's saying hey you know you can pray throughout your day you could pray in the car you could pray while cooking while washing dishes wood whatever you're doing during the day but he says hey take some time aside go in private go in your room close the door and seek seek me in prayer and in that 
time of intimacy with the Lord, you can cry out to God. You can vent. You could pray. You could intercede for others, which is praying for other people's needs. And how many times do we say, oh, I'll, I'll pray for you. Do you pray for the person? No, like go really pray. You could pray in that moment. You could pray in your mind. You could pray on your way to back home from work. You could pray wherever you are, but really say, hey, Lord, help this person with their situation. Or Lord, please help, help heal this person's family member. Or help heal my friend or this person from wherever. You see, like God, help them, guide them, give them strength and peace during their hard time. You see, it's such a lovely thing. But you can also go in a private place and have that intimacy time with the Lord in prayer and talk. It's like when you're in a relationship with someone or with your spouse, you know, you may have to talk things out in private. Is the same with God. Hey, I need to talk things out in private. When a couple is in intimacy, they're not all out there, you know? They're in a private place. It's a similar concept, but with God, and it's just talking to God and being in prayer and peace and reverence to the Lord. Because I say reverence because the truth is that many times we're so caught up, we're so busy. And while He hears you and He still sees and, and wants your prayer, but isn't it beautiful to say, hey, here I am one on one? How much of a difference does it make when? someone speaks to you but they have 50 things going on at the same time they can't focus in comparison to when someone speaks to you and they're like hey how are you doing today not scrolling not busy not distract how are you and suddenly like oh my god this person's talking to me this person's listening to me and i could hear them and they could hear and it's a different feel right that's that's what that means so prayer talking to god will definitely help you get closer and you may think well sometimes i don't feel like it pray harder when praying is hard pray harder sometimes we're so deep into our issues that we have no energy or strength to pray but the truth is the enemy the enemy will try to make you feel discouraged from praying the enemy will try to make you feel like who am i praying to i feel silly well god hears you the lord sure does hear you and he loves you and he wants you to pray but when praying feels impossible just pray vent talk to god and you'll see that through prayer the lord changes things in your life and he's working so i love you guys number two you can get closer in a relationship you can grow your relationship with the lord and get closer to the lord through a life of worship worship is essential as a believer as a child of god as a christian as someone who truly loves the lord because you are praying in worship you it's an outpour from your heart it's an offering that you offer the lord you are worshiping your god your true living god you know you are saying i don't worship nothing else in my life but you because thank you for your blessings it's a worship that comes out of a, an outpour of gratitude an outpour of worship you are acknowledging and recognizing who he is and just worship and praise the lord but while all that is so beautiful and there's such a lovely essence to worship. But did you know that you can also have a breakthrough in the midst of your worship? Do you know that the atmosphere around you can shift in your worship? Suddenly your heavy burdens are lifted off your shoulders and you feel just comfort and peace. It's a beautiful, ha, ah, you know, really psycho. Uh, it just, it's it's from the innermost being. It's coming out of your your spirit, you know, you are, it's a worship is a way to connect with God. So there's a story in the Bible that I love. And this story is found in the books of Acts chapter 16, verse 25 to 34, right? And this is a story of when Paul and Silas were in jail and they were locked up in chains in, in jail and they just focused on the good. They focused on God. They started worshiping and the word of God tells us that because of their worship, their chains were broken, but there was also a large trembling where they were and the other um, gates of the jail, the, the chains were broken and not only they were set free, but others were set free as well. And they were unjustly put in jail, um, but through worship, the Lord heard them, heard their worship. and. I could imagine it was so pleasing to the Lord, right? Because the Lord is pleased when you worship Him. So it's factual, you know, the Lord was so pleased with them. And because of the worship, worship is so, such a powerful tool against the enemy too. He can't handle, the devil does not like when we worship, okay? Um, worship God. He wants to be the one being worshiped, but he's so bad and evil. We're not going to focus on all you're doing. We can't give you more credit than we give God. We got to give God credit and give focus more on him. But the truth is that the worship of Paul and Silas, they kept worshiping. They focused on the Lord. That was so powerful that it first had to break the, their chains, but it created such a large trembling that it didn't only break their chains and not only set them free but 
it just shows the power of worship is set the others free so you remember how i mentioned that worship changes the atmosphere around you that's exactly what happened it was like an explosion it started with them and then it caused a reaction everywhere else not only their atmosphere was changed but the atmosphere around them and it's a powerful thing because it shows us how when we worship god also takes care of everything else we're praying about god also takes care of those around us and those around you are blessed you're blessed but others that are part of you will be blessed as well you worship god he you know blesses you because his your worship to him is like a pleasing essence it's like a gift it's like a something that you know even if god doesn't give us nothing in return you know it's for him you know we we don't even deserve it we shouldn't we don't shouldn't worship expecting something in return but god is so good loving and faithful that the truth of the matter is that he'll bless you back and even you and your family will be blessed so is a chain reaction no pun intended no i'm just because <laughs> of the story so it says like this and at midnight paul and silas prayed so first they prayed remember how we spoke about praying and which was number two and that's why worship is our point number two and sang praises unto god and the prisoners heard them and suddenly there was a great earthquake the trembling i was talking about so that the foundations of the prison were shaken the foundation imagine how powerful worship is your worship even your hum or your worship in the car or your worship at church with the whole body of christ is worshiping pressing on together it's such a beautiful thing because there's so many ways to worship the lord but worship could shake up the foundation of a prison and you know how strong of a fort a prison is they're heavy duty so it could imagine especially back in the day too so it says the foundations of the prisons were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened what say what and everyone's bands everyone's bands everyone's chains were loosed okay they were loosed they were set free so not only they were set free because of the worship but those around them. praise god so that's the power of worship so another way to get close in your relationship with the lord is through worship number three is reading the bible the word of god is alive the word of god is the word of god is god and the bible also tells us that the word of god is a lamp unto my feet and a light onto my path and that is found in the book of psalms chapter 119 verse 105 while the word of god is good the word of god is life and it's god right it's living it's a lamp to our feet it guides us because it's literally the word of god it's a guide to our life i once learned that there is no situation on earth possible that we can go through that is not in the bible or that god doesn't have a bible verse for us to be able to use as guidance and instructions for our life there is bible verses on nearly every single topic either in the beginning or towards the end of the bible you will find a contents page where it'll tell you the bible verses for different topics and different things in life and where you can find that and what page you can find that right or in what chapter of the bible you know or bible verse specifically you may see it in different ways depending on what bible you're using but the good thing is that there is that contents guide to help you find so if you're struggling with temptation you can go to the section if, if it says to it's going to say temptation and then it'll give you those bible verses that have to do with temptation and helping you overcome temptation or a story about temptation and you'll learn so much if you're dealing with sadness there's bible verses for that if you're dealing with anxiety the bible verses where god talks to you about that so god wants you to read his word so that he can guide you so that it could refresh and restore your life and to speak to you many people say well i don't feel like god speaks to me he could speak to you through you reading his word there's so much God has to say to you there. There's so much God has to say. And it's so uplifting and it's also confronting, but it's loving as well. So it's so beautiful. It's a whole new world. If you just emerge and submerge yourself in the word of God, you'll learn so much. And reading the word of God is not boring at all. There's stories. There's, there's crime. <laughs> there's love stories. There's everything. Okay, the drama. <laughs> If you read it like there is just everything and anything but it just shows um how real it is and how it could apply to our lives and we could learn so much from the word of god his word just will bring life to you his word will just feed your spirit and 
it'll change your life. So God didn't God doesn't just want you to read the word of God, he also wants you to obey. Did you know that in your obedience there is a blessing? And it says like this in the book of Luke chapter 11 verse 28 it says, he replied, "Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey it." So guys, one thing is to read the word which is great, you learn so much, but God also wants you to obey, obey his commandments. There's so much guidance in the word of God. How can we live a more righteous life? How can we live for Christ? How should we live, you know, the right way and how to be better humans, you know, in general. What is salvation? What is faith? You know, um, what is the coming of Christ? Read his word, but through the directions of the Lord, through the word of God, we are able to please the Lord and live in obedience when we actually live out what God is telling us through the word, not just read the Bible. Like, you know what I mean? Then in that case, you're just reading the Bible. It's like, if I just go to church, but I don't apply anything, but I don't try to you know, fellowship if I don't try to live out a Christian life. And don't get me wrong, this is not about religion. This is about one God, Jesus. You know what I mean? God is, who are you following? You know, who are you listening to? And the word of God tells us he's true. You know, he's a true God. John 17, 17 says, sanctify them in the truth. Your word is the truth. Earlier we read that the word was God and the word is good. And now we're reading that the word is truth. So God is truth, which is also in another Bible verse, this all interconnects. It says Proverbs 30 verse five, every word of God proves true. God's word never turns void. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him, okay? So read the Bible, get to know God. It's amazing and it's life-changing if you apply it, okay? So the fourth good habit for us to try to apply to our lives is to put God first in everything you do. Now, I recently uh, posted a video, which was the last video. I'll put it up here. But guys, put God first in everything you do. When you put God first in everything you do, you prevent yourself from putting anything before God, which in that case, it becomes an idol. Anything you look at more than God, anything you focus on more than God or, or allow to guide you or, or that you're just obsessive over and it takes it robs from your time with god either through praying worshiping either through fasting either through anything absorbing most of your time that is an idol and that means you're not putting god first but as we learned in the previous video that i shared and through the word of god that when you put god first everything comes into addition to you see because the lord is our guide and because he knows what's going to happen in our lives and what's best for us and the promises of god that he has for your life that is to come he says hey give me control i got this i got you i got plans for you i'm gonna help you if you call out to me i'll help you and if you just allow me to take control of your life you know what i'm saying and don't worry don't stress put me first put pray first thing in the day put everything to submission, I'm gonna take care of your life. But you gotta hand over the wheel. You gotta hand over control. And that's the beauty of it. It's not like, put God first, like why? God, God, God. Yes, it's because he is God, we're not. He is the Almighty, we're not. You know what I mean? We need Jesus. Like We need the help of the Holy Spirit. We need the help of the Lord. Without God, there are three, three in one. You know, without God, we're nothing. So I'm like, Lord, you know what's gonna happen tomorrow, not me. So if, before I go to bed, I pray. And if in the morning I put everything before you first, the day won't just go how I make it happen, but you'll help me through the day. And and I, hopefully I do a better job than yesterday. You see what I'm saying? And you'll protect me and you'll prevent things from happening in my life that could hurt or hinder because I prayed first. Because maybe tomorrow I was gonna be anxious. And maybe tomorrow I was gonna worry. Maybe tomorrow I was gonna go through something that was gonna disturb my emotions. But because I prayed and I submit, I put God first, I submitted things before him, that didn't happen. You see what I'm saying? Or before, you know, you accept, um, let's say, a job or before you think something is going to be good in your life, God could protect you from you stumbling or being hurt because then he'll show you that something's not for you or he'll take it away before it's too late. You see what I'm saying? And then in that case, it's a blessing and not a loss. These are just examples. 
So put God first, check out the video, I go into details. The following is going to church. God wants us to fellowship. God wants, you know, it's good for you to be mentored and pastored by somebody. This could help because it'll keep you accountable as we are trying to, you know, live a, a lifestyle that pleases the Lord as we are trying to let go of our worldly ways and ways that aren't pleasing to the Lord, ways that don't, you know, reflect Christ or believe in our faith in Jesus Christ through us. It's good to have accountability. It's good to have pastors or leaders or mentors, counselors, someone. So therefore, being part of a nice and healthy church could be a blessing, you know, and unity. I'll put a verse here about unity. God loves unity. He made us to be together. We're not meant to be alone from the beginning of time. He created Adam and then he created Eve because he created Eve to be his helpmate. You see, he saw man and saw that he wasn't good. He wasn't good for him to be alone. So he created Eve. You know, they came together. He said, be fruitful and multiply. He wants unity. He wants multiplication. He how can we work together for the kingdom of God? How can we work together for our community? How can we work together to impact the world in a positive way and make a difference? It's through fellowshipping and gathering and working as a unified church for the blessing of others and to grow as well as individuals. So that pleases the Lord, okay? So go to church, you know, part of a church, and that's a great way to um, get closer to the Lord. Now, the other way to get closer to the Lord is let go of worldly things. Guys, we can't, we gotta be or hot or cold. The word of God says, and I'll put the verse here, that literally God says be hot or cold. You can't be middle, you know, you can't be just 50 50, one foot in, one foot out. Now, I'm not saying be perfect because God, you know, God wants you to go to Him him as you are you don't have to be perfect before you go to church that's something i love that church is like a hospital like when you go to hospital people aren't all healed we're at the hospital because we're sick right the same way church we're at church because we are spiritually let's say right spiritually sick spiritually hungry and hung in hunger to be healed emotionally be healed spiritually to seek god seek the father to learn about god to pray and worship together as a uni unified front right so with that being said god's not saying fix yourself first and then come to me no it's like come to me come as you are you know and and let me work in you that's what a church is there for so it's a beautiful thing guys okay go to church and then you gotta let go of worldly ways but that's gonna help you let go of worldly ways you have to try to apply it to yourself to say hey i may be kind of lukewarm right now but i'm really trying to live a life um that pleases the lord a life of faith a life of courage a life that you know I, I'm, I'm a better human because of god a life of purpose a life where you know i allow the lord to guide my my path and my steps and a life full of completion and it's just positive and a life full of life before the lord because i have god in my heart you see what i'm saying not like oh i could be worldly but i'm gonna go to church too it's like at some point you gotta make a decision to try to not live a double life you know what i mean now, i'm not judging or anything we're not perfect and we're all in a process you see what i'm saying but i'm saying to work intentionally every day to be more like christ and apply his word okay and not be lukewarm and fasting okay and last but not least habit number seven is fasting now if you apply this this can really help you sacrifice the flesh separate yourself from worldly ways and worldly things and focus on jesus and reading the word and praying and you're like what isn't fasting for like back in the day and you know what this may be a touchy subject for even christians some christians some people a lot of cultures are have accustomed to fast but as a christian we also have a culture to fast now you may think all right it wasn't that for like back in the day like what's the point why do we fast well a fast is a sacrifice of something that may have a hold on me but i'm sacrificing fleshly and like worldly things that really worldly things not too much like worldly things we should already not be trying to have a hold of that as a christian right or someone trying to apply the word of god like we mentioned earlier but i'm saying more like fleshy things that control us maybe it's tv social media maybe i can't live without coffee your sugar hey i'm guilty <laughs> i used to be that type of person who says oh my god i 
but if I don't have coffee, I can't function today. I need my cup of joe, you know, and it's like, oh my god, I need my sugar. I love pastries. I love coffee. I'm it is just where I'm from that's like a huge thing it was like a social thing it was like a connecting thing and it's just a part of me so when I fast I'm intentional when I fast like meat dairy sugar coffee and it's like like the Daniel fast you know what I mean there's the Esther fast where some people fast for three days they don't eat for three days they may just drink water and it's because daniel was morning needed comfort strength from the lord and guidance and he fasted for 21 days he didn't eat dairy sugar meat um anything like that right and then it was a time to let go of these things that may kind of control us and things that we want to feed into our body and instead we are focused in feeding ourselves with the word of god time a lot of time of prayer and worship and i like to say when i'm in a fast whenever i get hungry that's a friendly reminder to pray i always say that like it's just like pray worship focused on what we're doing here and it's such a cleansing time and it gives like this mental clarity that comes with it and you feel more connected spiritually to the lord the esther fast esther wanted favor from god before the king because she was going to go before the king and she was at risk because at the time you couldn't just go before the king if he wasn't calling you to go before him she wanted to present herself without being potentially killed but because she was made for a time like that esther sent her cousin malachi that raised her hey malachi help me fast for three days no water i mean no yeah no food uh fast for three days and go before the presence of the lord and i too will fast with you and they sent others to do it the fast with them and they fasted for three days she sure enough went before the king got favor from you know god with the king and she got victory and conquered because hello, god always comes through for his children for those who trust and believe in him so fast fasting helps you connect to god fasting could bring you that clarity and get you spiritually strong and remember that certain things cannot control us we need to be willing to sacrifice what are you willing to sacrifice for god today are you really that committed to get closer to jesus now before you do any fast please be careful you know one thing i i'm i have a lot of faith but i'm also very practical you know pray about it what type of faith, uh, fasting you're gonna do um but please be careful like if you have a medical situation or something not that you should have fear you should have faith that god will take care of you because you know you're fasting you're doing this for him and he's real but at the same time let's have wisdom on how how we go about it and just make sure that before you fast is something safe and good for you but just think about today ask god ask yourself what do i need to sacrifice maybe I spend too much time playing video games and I don't read my Bible. Maybe I'm scrolling too much on social media and I haven't even prayed. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, what what really do we need to sacrifice? Maybe your thing isn't food. Maybe you're like, I could go 21 days without meat and dairy and sugar and coffee. It doesn't do anything to me. It's like, whatever. So, but maybe your thing is like the TV. Oh, Netflix. Ooh, my shows. There you go. Sacrifice the flesh sacrifice the flesh <laughs> so guys these are seven ways that can help you get closer to the lord to get spiritually strong build a relationship get to know jesus before you're like who's this god who's this guy these are seven tips seven good habits that if you apply them to your life i guarantee you you'll be closer to god and it'll enhance your life as a christian god bless you i hope you enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching and if it is your first time here and you haven't subscribed yet what are you waiting for guys thank you so much go ahead and click that subscribe button don't forget to please give this video a big thumbs up i really appreciate it and hit that notification bell so that you know when i post another video take care be blessed and share it send this to somebody who needs it